love Vortex. So in case you missed the last video, I suddenly had this idea for a poster. And I'm going to write it down before I forget. No matter what, you always have enough. Should I do it this way or should I do it that way? If I do it this way, I'm going to have to squeeze the letters, which you know I hate doing. She said, hi, Vortex. Are you going to say hi back? She walked away. So You'll get your opportunity soon. <laughs> no matter what, I think I should do it this way. No matter what, you always have enough. So, I do these posters because I feel better. I sing because I feel better. I write jokes because I feel better. I don't care if people like it or not. I don't care if people... See, are you going to say hi? She's waiting. <laughs> I'm kidding. She doesn't give a fuck. She's a cat. She's a cat. See, look. See what I had to do there? Looks terrible. It's okay, though. It's not finished. No matter what, you always... Um, yeah, I think that, like, people are way too concerned what the rest of the world thinks about their life. And that's silly because, like, they don't have to pay your bills. They don't have to sleep in your bed with, with your thoughts and your conscience, you know? It's like, as long as you do what your conscience is okay with, then it, it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it because they don't have to deal with the consequences, you know? I think I fucked it up already. Oh. What is it, baby? What is it? You know, people are always judgmental, though. People are always, like, haughty and, you know, authoritative. And they love to put their two, three, four, five, six, seven cents in, you know, when nobody asks for that. But... Why do we do that, y'all? Why do we do that? Why do we state our opinion when nobody actually gives a fuck about it? <laughs> I mean, stating your opinion is not going to change anything. 
It's like you could be on social media all day. It's like I realized that about these videos, too. I mean, I, I know that people are saying, well, I value your insights, and I think you're really wise, and more people need to watch this. And Well, here's the thing, honey. Appreciate that, by the way. Love ya. Love ya. Um, if you appreciate me, I really appreciate you. But I don't expect most people to get it. And the reason for that is is because most people are fucking stupid. Okay? And, and they're just, like, so egotistical. They just want to be right about everything. And, you know, my existence screams questions. You know? Like, my existence screams, you know, distrust in, in what I'm told. And I don't think that most people are ready for that. You know? It's like, if they ain't ready for Nick Fuentes, they definitely ain't ready for me. I'll tell you that. So. What's funny is that all the mainstream conservatives are, like, echoing statements that he's made. Maybe eventually they'll echo statements that I made. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. I think that worked. But, uh... Ooh, Paisley just took a shit. You hear her in there? She's burying it. marker top where did it go there it is okay um but yeah man pe people aren't ready to have their reality rocked the way that i would rock their reality you know people want their ego stroked, and that's not something I'm going to do. I mean, if I'm not stroking my ego, why the hell would I stroke yours? <laughs> you know? I mean, I was right about smartphones from the, from the fucking jump, but I'm not gloating about having a flip phone. I mean, I talk about it a lot. I know that I mention it a lot. The reason I mention it is because I stress that less complications are better. Like, you will have a much more fulfilling life. You will be far less stressed. But I, I think that a lot of people... You know, they, they want to be told, like, how to... Continue to live comfortably. Continue to, like, stay on the same path that they've been on that hasn't been working. Because they, they don't want to move. They, they don't want to have to do anything different. And, and so, like, I think that this whole channel is, is all about, you know, transformation and, and being like open to the idea that you're wrong and open to the idea that that you you know need God and and you need like spiritual direction and uh yeah I, I don't think that people want to hear that they they want to hear like well do you support this politician or do you support this this policy or whatever it's like no it doesn't fucking matter dude it doesn't matter None of that shit matters. The only thing that matters is you bettering your spiritual condition. Because then that will help you deal with whatever we got to deal with. You pressing a button, you tweeting or like going to some protest rally or something like that is not going to change things here. I mean, it might change things in a third world country because they don't publicize all that shit. 
You know? It's like here, everything's a spectacle. And that's precisely why you can't trust any of these movements. You can't trust any of these people that are that are famous or whatever. All these internet people. And like, I love Nick. You know, there are several people that, that I really love. And they all hate each other. So, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. That like, people take themselves so seriously. They take their opinions so seriously. And it's like, your opinion ain't gonna save you. Your love for this country ain't gonna save you. Y your appreciation for whatever opportunity you've been promised you have here ain't gonna save you. And your religion ain't gonna save you either. Like, I fucking love the church. I love, love, love the church. But, you know, what it all boils down to is, like, your personal faith in God. I mean, I know there's strength in numbers. There's power in numbers, right? Is that what they say? There's power in numbers. And, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? But, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like people, people have way too much faith in institutions. And, like, th that, that whole, you know, election floozy of, of 2020 proved that you know we cannot trust the whole system especially now with fucking uh you know digital um if they're, if they're doing things digitally like there's no way there's no way that we could trust it i mean we just did a vote today at my church with you know little pieces of paper that we can count but but we we have a really small church, so I don't I don't think there there was a way that that, that could get screwed up. <laughs> but you know, if Mark Twain was saying that like we can't trust the voting system, that, then we definitely can't trust it now. You know what I'm saying? Like I I would trust the writers of the time that actually saw like what was happening in the country way more than I trust like politicians and you know people that watch TV you know like they're watching TV and the TV is telling them like what to think about everything rather than like observing people's behavior you know so it's like when COVID first arrived it's like <laughs> I knew very few people that had it but, they, like, the, the news media made it seem like this was, like, a, a constant thing. Because they were trying to scare people into taking the test. Right? Well, y'all know how we feel about those tests. Most of these people aren't conspiratorial enough. They want a sash all because they didn't take the jab. It's like they need critical race theory to prove the public school is bad. When they weren't telling white people to hate ourselves. I knew that. Sitting in history class, asking myself, is this really it? Probably not. Because if I said that out loud, well, I know I'd be reprimanded. And I was already reprimanded everywhere else. Anytime they ask a question, the sheep don't want to hear it.
because they don't know what that is. And maybe they're mad that they didn't ask it. Or maybe they're mad because their brain can't expand that far. Maybe they're mad because they look at the system and just trust it. And they're internalizing their shame. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they actually give a fuck, but I'm probably wrong. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. No matter how cynical I seem to be, I still want to believe that people are good. I still want to believe that people have the ability to be good. But they've allowed all these things to make it harder and harder and harder to be good. why I don't do social media like y'all do. Because I want to be good. That's why I don't have a Twitter. I don't think there's anybody on Twitter that's good. They might have good intentions. But where do those go? Karl Marx had great intentions, right? Martin Luther had even better intentions. People want to think about stuff like that when they make the decisions that they make every day. They're too busy looking backwards. You don't even notice shit that's right in front of you. Oh wait, it's just this. Never mind. I'm so glad I don't have a smartphone. And people notice too. The good ones do. See, I read the Bible at my work. And, like, I've had people come up to me. Like, because I'll, I'll be, like, flipping burgers on a grill. And, like, people come up to me, like, where are you at? I'll be like, Ecclesiastes. Again. <laughs> Isaiah. One more time. So good. So fucking good. I know I swear a lot, okay? That's that's a problem. Maybe eventually I won't swear anymore. I mean, I've noticed that I swear less, like a little bit less. I mean, there's certain things I don't say anymore. Like, I don't take the Lord's name in vain anymore. I mean, if you want proof of that, you can just watch, like, my old channels. Like, uh, my original channel, Aimless. I mean, GD, that used to be, like, my favorite curse word. And I don't really think that God gave a fuck about that. I don't think that he took it personally or anything. But, you know, it, it's just better for me if I don't say that. You know, it's like, I don't want to damn God. It ain't his fault. And I don't think that anybody's really doing that, by the way. Like, when you swear, I mean, you're just blowing off steam or it's just a learned behavior, you know? It's like you pick up on, on things that you heard. And, you know, I work in restaurants and I do comedy with a bunch of dirty-ass motherfuckers that talk about eating ass. <laughs> They're not ashamed of this either, you know? It's part of their routine because they think it's going to get them more gigs if they talk about this, okay? Because that's where we're at in our society. But, you know, it's, it's not like I'm judging them because that's just where they are. And I don't have to live their life just like they don't have to live mine. So who the fuck am I to, you know, get on to them about their weird sexual habits? You know, I mean, they think it's weird that I'm celibate. So 
<sighs> anyway. But yeah, man. Did I have a point? I think I had a point. All right. I trust that there is good. And I know that that's really hard to do in this day and age because of, of how, how all of the bad things of the world are being magnified. And, and that's what they want. And that's why I tell people, stop watching the news. Stop going on social media. If it's depressing you, stop doing it. And they're like, well, I, I just want to, I just want to say what's going on. Because you want to control things, dude. You want to control things and you can't control things. That's what makes you so mad. That's what makes you so anxious is that you can't control what's going on. They want you to be in a constant state of trepidation. Okay. They want you to be in a constant state of rage. Now that's not how I want to live my life, especially when I know the hope that is in Jesus Christ. I don't want to be focused on all the shitty things about this world. Anything you focus on gets bigger. So if I focus on Jesus, I'm going to see more and more of that goodness in my life. If I focus on the devil, if I focus on all these demons and all the ways that they're corrupting the youth, that's all I'm going to see. And I won't notice like that there are actual children at my church playing around and running outside and like enjoying the sunshine and not staring at a fucking tablet. I mean, there, there's still, there's still good people in this world, but, but sites like Twitter, I mean, even YouTube, it's, it's, it, they're just promoting shitty ass content. Everything's homogenized. Everybody's doing the same thing. It's so boring. It's so fucking boring. Like, that's my biggest complaint of all this stuff. It's not, oh, it's so evil. It's so wrong. It's so terrible. It's like, yeah, fucking duh. It's boring. But you know, that's, that's always been the case though. It's like people, people see something that's popular and they're like, okay, okay, that guy made it. So I'm going to do it the way that guy did it. You know, it's like people that aren't original at all. I mean, I'm not saying that like being original is the most important thing. And I think it's really hard to be original anyway, but you know, just, just doing what you think is going to get you popular or famous or make you money is not <sighs> that's not I don't even I don't even know what to say about that. It's just it's just sad. It's it's sad that that so many people live like that and think like that. And you see that happen to bands, you know, like I mean I'm a huge fan of music and you know bands that have like a really cool sound, a really like seemingly original sound it's like whenever they start to get more famous, they start to become more and more homogenized. You know, this happened to the band, uh, the Kings of Leon. Like if you listen to their first two albums, fucking gold. Okay. Gold, absolute gold. And then they started to get more popular and now their songs are like really fucking boring and mainstream. Okay. I mean, the lead singer will always have a really authentic voice. He's, he's got a pretty cool voice. But, you know, he takes up after, uh, what's his face? Peter Green from Fleetwood Mac. The original Fleetwood Mac, mind you, okay? Yeah, if, if you listen to old school Fleetwood Mac and you listen to the Kings of Leon, they sound exactly the same. But, uh, yeah, man. Like, I think originally, like, like just like Fleetwood Mac, like, Kings Leon was like a blues band, and now they're just like this mainstream crap. So, and I understand that, like, you know, musicians change a little bit, like, their, their style changes, you know. People freaked out when Bob Dylan introduced the electric guitar, 
you know, but he kind of did that because he didn't want to be typecast. He didn't want to be told, no, you can only do this. Like, you're a folk singer can't play an electric guitar, you know? So I, I can understand that. And I mean, I'm, I'm a fucking little tadpole, you know? I'm a little tadpole. When it comes to this uh, comedy shit. And yet people still try to pressure me to, like, always play my keyboard. But I, I wouldn't be able to, like, expand upon... You know, other things, other talents that I have, if I were to just focus on that one talent or that one thing that I do that I'm, I'm good at. And, and that's the issue with, with not just comedy, but like with everything, you know, where it's like people find like one thing and they're like, oh, this works. I'm just going to stick with this. And it's like, I see other comics do this all the time where they just like, they, they attempt to do new material and it's not working and the audience isn't cool with it, or they, they don't find it funny, and so they just go right back to the same shitty material they did before. I guess it's not shitty because it worked, but it's like, it's boring, at least it is to me, because I've, I've heard it so many times. It's like, I, I know the punchline before they even say it. So, that's a cool thing about me. I don't do that shit, mainly because I can't. Like, I couldn't even do that if I wanted to. So, it's always fresh. I think I need to call a plumber. Um, <laughs> let me just show you what we're dealing with here. Yep, yep, we need to call a plumber.